Hello, happy holidays, almost happy new year. I'm standing here at ITP and IMA in Brooklyn, New York, Tisch School of the Arts and New York University, where just a few days ago, this whole floor was full of over 100 projects, student work from the ITP and IMA programs on the fourth floor of 370J Street. And we looked at 91 projects. You can see that full three and a half hour live stream by following the link in this video's description. But what you're about to watch is a shorter highlight reel of a bunch of projects made by a wonderful group of students. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you have had a great 2019, and I look forward to seeing you on the coding train in 2020. Goodbye. Uh, so I'm Aidan uh, Fowler. I'm Nicole Calvacuinto. And this is our lenticular portal room. So we're doing experiments with a lenticular lens, which is if you've seen bookmarks that have moving images, that's what we're working with here. And it stretches and magnifies the light. So we're doing different experiments here. We have a three-dimensional box, um, moving lenses that are rotating, and then these flat sun, sun rises over the ocean. There's nothing in the box. Yeah, okay. Shall we do the reveal of like what actually is inside? It's an empty box. It's an empty box, but there's a thousand LEDs in here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tina. I'm Chris Christina. And this project is called One Amongst Many. It's a physical data visualization representing women in computing. So as you uh, pick up these orbs, they illuminate to full brightness. And you can see every woman that we uh, chose is in a cohort with a bunch of other women. So we have computer scientists, mathematicians. As you pick an orb up and read about a certain woman, other women in her cohort will also illuminate. Um, and as the orbs are interacted with over time, they get incrementally brighter. My name is Lulu and this is an installation that shows everybody has a mountain on their reach of hand. I have to try out the rock, what is the shape of my hand, and it will turn into a mountain, <laughs> which is my own mountain. And I want everybody to have a nature connection when they see their reach of their hand. Hi, I'm Winnie, um, and so these are all from my data class. Um, I'm from Hong Kong, so I did a lot of projects about the protests and specifically focusing on the narratives. Um, I'm really interested in non-traditional um, approaches to protests, um, and the focus on narratives is because I feel like our ability to craft our own narrative is something that's really powerful and healing. These two projects are about police and um, protesters, uh, and so I have these YouTube videos that I script their transcript um, from, and I did these generative texts, uh, and also with the most common words, I made these fridge magnets um, that people could interact with, um, and then this piece here is all the protest information I have consumed from September up until now. Um, so as you hover, you could see the articles um, and the brighter the box is, the more articles I have read um, in that hour of the day. So my name is Temis and my project is basically a block puzzle game when you can build the correct sentence. You have to use the green blocks in this case. This is basically like a learning tool for kids. Carrot, ball, no, say that, try it then. Yeah. Takes, uh, ball. And basically that's it. <laughs> And so my project's a VR project, um, and it uses VR to tell a poetic experience about um, kind of exploring flashbacks and what it means to have control over our own experiences and memory. And so that man that you see is supposed to represent trauma. So the first time you go through this experience, it's like you're going and walking around and you may experience something horrific happen. Um, and now this part is supposed to represent how memory will kind of try to understand that. So in a memory, if you've ever unfortunately experienced something like bad happen, you might replay that memory in your head over and over again. Um, and if he ever chooses to stop, he can stop time and stop everyone from moving, but he can never prevent what's going to happen. And so he is like looping this memory.
So it's really a struggle. It's about patience, actually finding where you need to be and then adjusting accordingly. I've only had a few hours on this, so I'm still trying to figure out how actually get to play this, but I've seen some other people do some interesting things on this. I'm the coding training community manager, also a first year at ITP. So this project is called the Black Projections Project, and basically I built what I call like a portal mapping device. Um, so it's like a map that potentially could help you unlock a portal, and it kind of talks about or investigates space, time, and how those are all connected to a lot of different moments that are happening. Um, and you basically explore it with the magnet, you move across the points, and then different images are projected on the screen. My name is Ada, and this is my project. Uh, it's Noise. It's an audio-enhanced optical illusion. The, the visual pattern is a vortex. The center shifts depending on where you're looking at it. So as the viewer moves around in space, it triggers, also triggers the audio changes in the headphone that corresponds to the uh, direction of the moving center of the vortex. My name is Rita and this project is in collaboration with Max da Silva and it's kind of a choose your own adventure poem. You can sit, you put your headphones, and you start it by saying hi sailors, and then it gives you a list of questions you can ask, and you hear a story that will change every time. Hi sailors. Hi stranger, you can ask us the following questions in any order, and you can ask the same question more than once until we reach out destination. Who are you? I am a sailor who will cross the ocean to get where I need to get and do what I need to do. Why did you leave? I left because my father owned a dark mountain of anger where he wanted me to live. I loved freedom more than I loved him. Hey, so I'm Lachlan. I'm a first year student here at IMA. Uh, and so I made a website called Gun Funded, and it's a visualization of the gun lobby's funding of US Congress. Like where I'm from in Pennsylvania, um, you, can, you can see the total um, and how the funding is disproportionately um, goes to uh, Republican men in Congress. Uh, and so you can go to anyone's profile, you can share these, um, you can see lists of top senators and representatives. So that's Gun Funded, and it's gunfunded.com. I'm Jake Sherwood. Uh, my project is called Climatescape. It's a kinetic art installation to raise awareness for climate change and the human effect on the climate. It's representing four uh, future potential climate change scenarios, going from best case to worst case. So as you progress through the installation, it gets more and more chaotic. Best case, kind of producing a more tranquil, uh, softer sound, and then as you get through it, it gets more chaotic and becomes scary at the end. Uh, my name is Alvaro La Couture. I'm Nicole Ginelli. And our project is uh, object tracking uh, installation that tracks objects to control different types of animations in real time. So we have these spheres that help with all of the animation tracking. So we're using the Connect 2 to track. Um, of the size of the spheres and the length of the brightness of the spheres. So we're getting a really smooth track of these, which are being sent to the 3D particle system community. I'm Sachiko Nakajima, an ITP second year, and I have um, a light installation which is based on the mathematics. Uh, so here, 
as you can see, there is a KDB equation which simulates a wave in a shallow water. But um, it seems to be difficult, but it can be also simulated by a very simple mathematics like like a cell automaton. So it goes to the closest beacon space. So big wave goes faster, while the small wave goes slower. So it's very similar to the real world. Small wave goes slowly, but big wave goes faster. And there also you can see a small wave goes slowly and big wave goes faster. My name is Yong Kun and here, Fan Yi is I am also the uh, creator of this project. The idea of this project is to uh, let people to interact what they are doing in the routine life and um, let them be aware of what they are doing because normally sometimes people are like doing their things on wirelessly. So we made a box which can reflect what people are doing in their daily life. So we set some of the interaction in the room, in the real size room, and every interaction they are doing in the room will be reflected in a small box. So I'm Fernando and I'm creating this character called the Firebird. And to embody the character, you need to put on these gloves. And I'm imagining here a performing arts context, so depending on the gestures you make, you get like different, a different sound, and also you change the position of this 3D object on the screen, and you can like change the color of the object, uh, making different gestures related to the narrative I'm creating. So you can make like fire, and you get a red object, or you can make like a tree, and you get a green object, and you can make like this, and this is bird. So you can fly, you can embody the fire, fire bird and fly around carrying this seed that is inside the belly of the fire bird. <laughs> My name is Pippa Kelmanson. Uh, I worked on this project with Noah Kernis. He also has a project. Uh, we made a heart that beats to the beat of your own pulse. Um, there's a monitor on the outside and there's a motor inside an elastic heart. Um, basically, you just put your index finger on the pulse sensor and then you can see your pulse beat in real time in a heart. I'm Julian Matthews. This is the hourglass. Um, so there is climate change related data um, correlated to um, the visual on the sculpture. So this is a statistic related to bees. Um, it, the bee disappeared off the face of the earth. Humans will only have four years left to live. Um, there are some static ones another static one, and then these require some user input. This is meant to visualize rising sea levels, so you can use a slider to um, demonstrate that. This is the approximate hue of the Flint River water during peak crisis. A little bit terrifying that this was coming out of people's faucets. Um, so these are two discs that I actually 3D printed um, that once it slows down, I attach NeoPixel strips on the outside, and with this motor down here, it allows me to spin it at um, 450 rotations per minute. My name is Jan. This is kind of like distance shadow kaleidoscope. It's like a uh, detector your distance. So if you like play it, it's like got a certain pattern according to it. And when you get close to it, you can like really control it by every centimeter. There's no projector, just light. No, just, just light, just like LED and two mirrors. And here, like you can try to like really control it slowly, like this here. Hello, my name is Matt Ross. I'm a second year at ITP, and I'm here to, to talk to you about your relationship with your data. What I have here today is a simple outlet, but it's not just a simple outlet. This outlet is connected directly to the servers at Google, and what it does is it looks for any documents that you haven't even looked at in over two years. So what you can do today is log in, and it will find just one single file. And if you're ready, you can pull the plug and it'll delete just that single file and maybe just let you take a step towards having data in your life that really makes you feel good and that it's important to you. You see it's retrieving all documents from a year and a half ago. When I pull this, I'll have six seconds to change my mind. But <laughs> see it's going gold. And that's the whole process. Uh, I'm Dana, I'm a second here uh, here in ITP, and I've worked together with Matt. Uh, we developed a new team called uh, URL Data, uh, where obviously you can see healthy data starts here. I'm going to scan this QR code. It's just a P5 sketch asking me, insert your phone into the container now.
all our goal today is basically to delete your or clear your browsing <laughs> history. So I'm gonna come here to this Pharrell, lovely Pharrell, and if you would take a look here, my uh, browsing history has been cleared. Hi, I'm Wen, I'm from Taiwan. Hi, I'm KJ, I'm from Korea. Yeah, so this project is called Garden of Voices. So this is basically a garden system that is based on word recognition. So you can choose the word from the library we built and say it to a microphone and see how it goes. Revolution. Yeah, so this installation is about like the power of words because sometimes it's too, uh, it's not it's invisible, so people just ignore it and want to emph emphasize that this is so strong that people should. I'm Stacy Yuan. Hi, I'm Moni. I'm Tian Xu. So this is a live vending machine. We want to raise people's awareness of uh, protecting animals and how the endangered animals are failing right now. Please insert the coin and start your journey. So here you can see an animation. The tiger is falling into the trap. Here you will get a product made by the tiger. It's a leather coat. I'm Skylar DeVos. This is my project. I called it Liquid Relationships. Um, and it's about connecting with other people. Hi, uh, I'm Gil, I'm a first year at ITP. This is the interactive scroll. Um, so it's designed to allow someone to interact with an ancient scroll uh, physically, so you can uh, use these rods to scroll through. And then this allows you to translate. Uh, my name is Nok and this project is called Light. It's about um, uh, communication with physical separation. <laughs> 